In this example, I've prepared a short sequence with some presenter footage, a lower third, and some captions. So we can imagine that if I am sending this off to my copy editor or whoever to check the spelling, make sure I've got all of the names right, they could make these edits directly and they could change the subtitles if necessary. But let's say at a certain point I realize the white doesn't work with that shirt. In fact, I don't think any of these subtitles should be white. They should all be black. Luckily, this caption clip was embedded from another sequence, which is called my caption sequence. I'll switch to that now. Uh, I've got these already open in different tabs. And here, this is my master template for all my captions. If I want to change the color, then I can change it to a black. Great. I come back here and wait a second, and there we go. It's black, and all the other three are black. So imagine this, but for thousands of captions and thousands of videos. Great. But now I need to have this translated into other languages. I'll take the example of one that's been translated into Isi Zulu. Apologies if the translation was wrong. I used ChatGPT to do this. So I hope it got it right. Okay, so I have now, this is the original interview sequence embedded here. Notice that if I change anything, if I change this, let's say yellow subtitles, something like that, maybe that will also propagate to all of the other videos. There we go. Take it back to black. Okay, and then you can make the changes here to the text if necessary. If, let's say, I need to make a change to the original sequence, maybe I need to replace this video footage and then I need to rearrange some of the timing of the captions. Let's say oh, that caption was a bit off. Those changes will propagate through, but it still keeps the text because if you change anything in a sequence, it will, it will keep that change, but everything else it will inherit from the original sequence. Also keep in mind you can have different people with different access to the different sequences. So your translator only has access to the Issy Zulu one, so they can't make any breaking changes to the original. And your designer might just have access to the original caption one. And then your editor could have access to the master sequence. So taking a step back, I want to show how I set this up and the steps that I needed to go through in order to do that. Now, let me delete everything and start from scratch to show you what this looks like if you are setting up a set of sequences like this. I will start with the caption. Very simple After Effects composition. I use the body moving plugin to export it. Just want to note in the settings, you want to disable glyphs so you have access to the actual text. And then I will go to render and you want to enable Google fonts on, on everything you are using on, on your fonts and save that. Okay, great. Now in my caption, sequence, I will drag over the caption.json file I generated. Yeah. Here it is. Great. I might want to make some changes. Like for example, I made this very long just so it had the ability to be long, but I think I'll take down the duration to maybe four seconds or so. Okay, great. Now in my interview sequence, I will drag in my video file from my desktop, drop it here. Notice that I'm immediately able to play it. it. Works fine. And this bar you see is it uploading it to the cloud in the background. So it's using it locally while we wait for the upload to complete. Make some changes here. Maybe increase the scale a bit so it's in the frame. Before I embed the caption, I just want to make sure that I have pinned 
the necessary attributes. So this will determine what is easy to edit in the other sequence. I'm going to go into my animation, into my layers, text, text again. I'm just going to change this. That's changed back. So I have that as an available field. I'm also going to change the color slightly. So now when I turn off this here icon, I have everything I have changed on this clip. And I'm going to click this pin to hold on to this text here. I'm also going to rename this to something a little bit easier because it's got the path of where it exists in the animation. It's called the text. Now in my interview, I embed timeline. There it is. And you can see that attribute is pinned and then immediately available for me to change. Now, if I import this into the Zulu sequence, I need to remember to pin these again so that they all appear the sequence, making it easier for the translator to make the changes. Thank you very much for watching. Go to tweak.video to try it out and sign up for the beta version to get early access to new features.